All right, so you're actually taking the day off from work, so you get to uh, hang out at the show a little bit, and you've been working at Blur for seven years now. Yes. And so this big creature, now, I know there was like sketches and all that kind of stuff, and you said it was initially produced in Max and then brought in the ZBrush to do all the kind of the detail into it. Yes. Now, what part of that did you play? Did you build the original or did you yeah. ZBrush the details? Well, uh, what we do in, the, in Blur is usually we do the, the complete character, so we start with uh, modeling the base in, uh, in Max, and then the same person will go to uh, ZBrush and add all the details. So it's usually like one yeah. person that like, like, will do the whole like work on that character, at oh, least yeah. for the modeling part. Yeah. Does somebody else do the texture or do you also do the no, texture? You, you also do the texture. I, also, I do uh, 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 character modeling, ZBrush, texturing, shaders, and when I'm done with that, I'm also doing uh, the scene assembly part, so the lighting with my character. Okay. I get the shots, with, usually they give me the shots where my characters are, uh, have close-ups on them. Because okay. I know the character, I know the setups for the displacement, for example, and uh, I'm also doing scene assembly. Uh, so, you, so you really become one with that monstrous creature. Exactly, that and, that, and that's what's <laughs> cool about this process is that we, we get to do everything from you know, the beginning of like uh, modeling from the concept to the end where we uh, put the lighting, compositing with the effects and everything. But now are you also doing stuff. the rigging and the animation? Or is no. that back in hand? Yeah, I'm not I, doing th that. Those are, no. yeah. yeah, I know. There's a lot, a lot of people that will just do rigging because that's like what they're really doing. Yeah, it's just because I'm, I'm, doing, uh, I'm doing character modeling and uh, scene assembly too. Okay. But uh, we have uh, uh, some people are doing just scene assembly, and uh, most of our, actually all of our character modelers are doing only character modeling. But uh, I like to, I like to uh, change and do different things, and I think uh, uh, lighting and rendering is all a very, you know, way to rewarding process. Change and get the and you know to, to do different to, things. Yeah. To get to see your, your the creature you model. Animated and you get to light it and you yeah. get to render it. It's 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 a big reward after doing all that work on it. I, so, I so that's what I like about this. Um, and I guess at some point it must be kind of exciting to you once you you've built it. You've got all the textures and you get the lighting. Now the next guy takes it, gets the rig and starts bringing it to life. And it's like that oh, must yeah. be really cool. Yeah. So see your guy sort of like coming to life. Kind yeah, of it's it's really exciting. And then. Uh, uh, so on that uh, video, the the mob targets. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the different areas. Those yeah, really I, I, cool. I got I got to do that too. So uh, I set up all those uh, uh, body deformations and the face uh, facial deformations. So I really went all the through the whole process on that on that creature. So that was that was really fun. So those deformations that were like around the shoulders and stuff. You're actually do you actually remodel? You take a copy of it. And you're changing that certain area? Yes, and you uh, so you, you duplicate your mesh and uh, you uh, deform that area and you record it as a morph target. Uh, after that, you have one mesh with uh, sliders and you can activate uh, those uh, body deformations. And, uh, and we. But you're saying now it's one, well, it's one mesh because the sliders control the morph target. Yes. At the end, we only but have one mesh. You're still morphing Right? Well, the, 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 the file that we use uh, uh, is not retaining all those copies. Okay. They're just uh, uh, baked in that uh, uh, morph target tool okay. that we have. So once the targets are in there, you can, the animators can just play with it. Right. And, and we, get, we get those uh, deformation uh, back and uh, we combine them with uh, animated displacement. And that's when we get all the, the tendons and muscles moving around. And the morph target, that's basically the tool that's built into Max. Is yeah. that right? It's yeah. not an extra tool you guys do? No, it's a, it's a tool that's called a, a, a morph target. Yeah. It's a modifier that you put on top of your mesh and, uh, and uh, it's going to recall all the deformations. You can name them and you can play with that. And to do the morph targets, you can't actually add to power, right? It has to be the exact same poly yeah, count. Yeah, it has to be set the, up between the two. It has to be exactly the same poly count. Uh, and the, the, if you have another vert or polygon moving somewhere else in the body, yeah. it's gonna, it's gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna deform only the, the area that you want right. to be affected. If you have something else moving, it's gonna show 
every time he's you know opening his mouth, you're gonna have one bird that's pulling on his shoulder. That's right, right. So, right. so you want to have the exact same mesh and just work on the, the area. So when you're working on the area, you're, you're really sort of like pushing and pulling in certain vertices, this kind of thing. Yeah, usually to get the change, but not adding or subtracting this. Kind exactly. Of thing. Like usually, what I do is like for the for the tendons in the neck or, or on the shoulder here, I just use that uh, soft selection that you have in Max. Mm -hmm. I select one bird and I do like a like a scale and then I you know I move the the, the muscles uh, try to get something that's uh, anatomically correct and wow. uh, and uh, once I get that I you know I record my move targets and go on. Gotcha. But the, the thing I've always wondered about is people doing the more targets now. I I dabbled in the more targets in Max only very played with it a little bit but I understand the concept of it. But it would seem, why not put like bones or something and move the bones to move the flash as opposed to making entire copies of that character? Well, uh, that's, that's uh, what I want. There's, there's different ways to do it. Uh, I guess like I, I worked with Maya before and they have, they have ways to deform the mesh with uh, objects that you would put inside of it. Wow. So that's more like a, a rigging department wow. thing. Wow. That's something that we developed over there. Um, and, and that's probably something that would need uh, that re would require a lot more uh, R&D and, uh, and yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, for, for what we're doing in Blur, uh, everything has to happen so fast. We we don't really have time to develop like big pipeline right, exactly. stuff. So we we always try to find like uh, fast solutions that uh, doesn't involve like a lot of resources and uh, and that can be very effective. So. But now Blur has also developed some specific tools, and some are actually released to the community. Isn't that right? There's certain like uh, either plugins or scripts, stuff like that. Yeah. We, well, I will, I think uh, it depends the, on, on uh, which project. Uh, what what the project requires. Like some some project would require that that very specific uh, rigging. That you know, in this case, like maybe more people would be involved and they, they would try to find like a, a better solution but um, uh, for that cinematic for example we, we were really looking at something you know uh, easily uh, uh, we can modify easily and we can just like uh, uh, input at the end you know like uh, during scene assembly rather than, yeah, yeah. than doing that and care because like Morph targets is, is not really an issue because uh, just the, the animator is going to deal with that, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then what we get is a point cache from the animator, so we don't we don't carry any extra geometry or anything in the at the end, and uh, um, uh, rather than if if you build that in the rig, uh, the animator is going to have to work with a more complex uh, rigging, and, and sometimes it can slow down the whole pipeline because if, if the rigging is too heavy then they can't really animate correctly they have a lot of you know uh, it's slowing down their process so so we found that process pretty uh, effective and then we can link those morph targets to uh, like I showed uh, uh, to the displacement and we can really add you know if we want the veins to you know to pop out because it's angry we can do that if we want any kind of uh, extra uh, uh, deformation that, that happens with the, the displacement, we can we can get that pretty easily. So. And with the displacement, you can can you control that like over time and amounts of displacement? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, so you well, define some we veins get, that you want to pop out. If if you want, you can have like a separate displacement map with just that vein that's going to pop out, and you can link that to any kind of let's say you have a morph target. So when he's doing that, it's firing that morph target, and then. You pull the veins, so you can you can link any kind of movement to any kind of displacement you want. Mm. And the, the good thing too is uh, that that's we, we use on those characters we use it for uh, body deformations, but on previous uh, cinematics we use it for actual uh, uh, facial deformation, which you can't really do with a rig. So like for example, the guy would get angry, and uh, and uh, it would fire like a, a, a different displacement map that would have all those uh, uh, 
wrinkles and face details. So there's multiple levels of displacement maps, even on the same area. Of yeah, the face. like for example, we have a displacement map for his face when he's neutral, when he's not doing any kind of extreme uh, uh, action. So that's going to be the, the the generic displacement map, and then and then uh, the animators will will pose the character when he's really angry and give us like a, a mesh of the character really angry then we we bring that to zbrush and we have pictures of the actors doing his face and we we trying to match all those details and we save that uh, displacement map we call it angry displacement map and then every time the guy would get angry he would he would uh, 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 gradiently uh, uh, like transitions that, between transition the between that, that okay. neutral uh, displacement map and the angry one, and then when he's get angry, we get all the details yeah. from the, the skin recalls and all that. So we found it really uh, uh, helpful on some project when we have close up, because before when the character would get angry, it would look really like smooth and, and nothing was really happening in the face, you know. And now we get all those extra like wrinkles and stuff that are really. really but a lot of that is now heightened because of the V-Ray. The V-Ray is giving you capabilities that you didn't really have before with Mental Ray. Well, we did that with Mental Ray actually before on the face, but... Uh, but that's uh, what your project manager was saying with V-Ray, you actually had a problem doing that. You well, couldn't the, have 10 displacement maps or something. Like well, the problem, one of the main problems we had with uh, uh, Mental Ray was uh, uh, the displacement rendering time was very uh, expensive right, with displacement right. compared to Mentor Ray where, where it's, you know, it's actually really fast to render with displacement. Computers are V-Ray. Oh, uh, V-Ray, V-Ray, yeah, V-Ray really is fast. fast. And uh, uh, the accuracy of the displacement is uh, much, much better with V-Ray. With, with Mentor Ray, we always had problem to get like really fine uh, details or we had to push it so much that the render time were, you know, yeah. uh, uh, through the roof. So now, we can get all those uh, very fine details with a uh, uh, really uh, fast uh, rendering time. Rendering. So, so, so everybody, we, everybody really likes the V-Ray stuff? Well, it's it's really our first big project that we use uh, uh, V-Ray. And uh, I mean, all the projects that we're doing now, they all using V-Ray. So, right, right. so it really shows that... I mean, I'm sure there was a, obviously a learning curve to being able to initially use V-Ray, yeah. but once you got in the pipeline, everybody's getting a handle on it, now you can... And we have like uh, uh, several supervisors that are doing different projects and uh, they can pretty much uh, choose what rendering they're going to be using. Right. So before, uh, a while ago, we were using Brazil and then uh, Mentor Ray came in and, and now after that everybody was using, on, on all their projects they were using Mentor Ray. And now we why, why was there any switch from Brazil to Mental Ray? I mean, I know there's a lot of followers of Brazil going way back. I know the Blur well, was a big follower of... of I know. Uh, so what, what happened, uh, I think, is uh, um, the quality of the renders were much uh, much better, I think, with Mental Ray. And, mm -hmm. and we, we got uh, a better results faster. Uh, uh, the materials were much more... Um, uh, developed in Mentor Ray, the, the skin shader, for example, uh, was uh, really, really better than, than the one in, in, uh, in Brazil. Uh, in Brazil, we ended up doing a lot of uh, compositing, like we would render everything separately, so like uh, the key light on the character would be one pass, and then the rim light would be another pass, and then uh, and this and that, and we ended up with like 20 passes for each shot, and it was it was a. Uh, uh, at the end, we, we didn't get that consistency. Uh, everything uh, didn't look like it was sitting in the in the environment properly. So it was a lot of a lot of. Uh,